What's up everyone? Eddie Mercado here with BloodyElbow.com and I'm about to speak with UFC co-founder and CEO of Combate Americas, Campbell McLaren. Now, Combate Ocho will be taking place this Thursday, August 11th from Los Angeles, California. If you're in the area, go check it out. So, let's give him a call and find out exactly what's going on with his new promotion. Find out what his thoughts are on the UFC. And find out about his new deal with UFC Fight Pass. Eddie. What's going on, man? Well, riding the car with uh, John Castaneda. Ah. Uh, you know, on the main card of the fight on Thursday. Yes, sir. How you both doing? Seasick. We got Afro Mike. <laughs> Afromowitz, how you doing, yeah, sir? Here. What's going on, guys? You know, we're in L.A. We love L.A. Uh, we've got a great event on Thursday. And, uh, you know, it's sunny and we're driving around getting ready to do more interviews. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Campbell McLaren, of course, co-founder of the UFC. Your fingerprints are still all over that place. Uh, not to mention... Dirty fingerprints. <laughs> What's that? Dirty fingerprints. Dirty fingerprints. Well, hey, it is where it is today, and I believe you had something to do with that. Uh, you are the CEO of Combate Americas, which is a the first ever United States Hispanic MMA sports and media franchise. Uh, welcome, thank you. Uh, you want to kind of talk about how the whole uh, Combate Americas came to be? Yeah, I, you know, a, a lot of it has to do with the Octagon Girls. Oh uh, yeah. You know, which I, I hope that sounds like an intriguing setup. Uh, I, a few years ago. Uh, I was visiting my mom in Indianapolis when the UFC did the first uh, uh, pay-per-view event there and or the first you know show that they did in Indianapolis. And I called Rogan, you know, he's an old friend and who I brought in in UFC 11 many, many years ago. And I said to him, I go, look, I, I, I know it's late notice, but I want to come. You know, I was going to hang out with my mom and see my mom, but instead I want to go see the UFC. So Rogan said, you know, I don't have a ticket. We can't get you tickets. It's sold out, but you can sit next to me. So if you ever saw that show or you see it on Fight Pass, you can see like this much of my face next to <laughs> Rogan in the booth. You know, I've got like an eyebrow in that show. And, and when I was there, Dana was laughing and he said, you know, why don't you go in the trailer and check out the Octagon Girls, you know? And look, I'm married a long time. I'm married 30 years this past June. I'm not looking for an Octagon Girl or a Square Girl or a Round Girl, any kind of girl. But I did go into the trailer because they are cute. And <laughs> when I was in there, I was looking at them. I was thinking they're very pretty women, right? But they're skinny, modely, pretty Asian kind of looking girls. And as I was thinking about creating Combate, you know, before it had a name, I was thinking the first thing I was going to do with our round card girls is they were going to be Latinas and you know, Latinas are filled out. The Latinas have a lot happening. They're not skinny little modely girls. And as I was there, I just thought, you know what? There's room for a fight promotion that has got real flavor. You know, Eddie salsa out sells ketchup in this country. Not because there's more Hispanics because everybody loves Spanish flavor. You know, and I wanted to create something that would be fun to watch. You know, we we've been running numbers because that's what Mike and I do at Combate. We run numbers where, we, you know, I'm making a joke. I don't really know how you actually run a number. But, uh, <laughs> the people that do run numbers have told us that our fights, 81 percent of our fights are ending in finishes. Right. By comparison, the UFC is at about 50 percent. And some group named Wellator, Wellator, not Wellator, I, I never can remember their name. They're like 30% finishes. So if you watch the Combate Americas fights in action, you're going you're gonna to see knockouts, TKOs, and tap outs. And, you know, it's like four out of five fights end in a finish. It, Combate Americas just doesn't like judges. We just anti judge. Why do you we think that is? Effort. Why do you think there are so many finishes in your promotion? Well, I think there's a lot to do with the spirit of, you know, Mexican and Puerto Rican boxing tradition, 
right? It's anti Floyd Mayweather. A Mexican boxer can be ahead on points on the 12th round, still comes out swinging. You know, no one waits it out. It's the fight start the moment the fight starts. And I think there's a, a pride to this style of fighting that translates into MMA from boxing. You know, nobody comes to dance. Nobody comes to ride out the clock. As we say, no humping in La Jaula. You know, <laughs> guys are going to stand up. They're going to kick each other. They're going to whack each other. They're going to smack each other. And if you think the guys are rough, you should see the women that fight for us, too. You know, uh, Kira Batara was injured. You won't see her on Thursday. Uh, but I, I think the style, remember, the UFC is a style of fighting. It is not the definition of MMA. It is a style. And I know that style because I helped create it. And college wrestling, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, that's part of the genetic code of the UFC. But the martial art of Combate Americas, to a great extent, is boxing. So people are all coming in. The UFC is essentially grapplers who have learned to punch. Combate is punchers who have worked on their grappling. So it's just okay. kind of the flip side. Now, is there like extra incentive for guys to keep it on the feet? Or it just kind of happens that way? Or Well, you know, again, culturally, I, you know, I think the fighters come in and, and do believe that's how you should fight. Uh, but that's a good question, and nobody has asked me that. And there is a financial incentive because we do add on bonuses for finishes. That's kind of how we do it with the guys. Okay, awesome. <laughs> that's a good question. No one has asked me that yet. That is why I'm here, sir. That is why I'm here. <laughs> okay, well, let me ask you this. Uh, what are your personal thoughts on the sale of the UFC? It's all in the news. It's kind of a big deal. What are your personal thoughts? Well, kind of a big deal. I mean, it's a huge deal. Uh, you know, $4.2 billion uh, for something that started out banned in 49 states. <laughs> you know, I still like saying that, banned in 49 states. You know, we've done it in six, and nobody ever said, wait a minute, that's 55 states. You know, nobody ever did that arithmetic. But look, what the sale of the UFC shows is that this is not only a legitimate sport, it is a super popular, super valuable sport. You know, the very well be maybe in the next Olympics, right? And it really become the millennial sport. It's certainly the millennial combat sport. And boxing's great. It's got a long tradition. Boxing is going to be around for a long, long time. But the truth of the matter is, you know, younger people have come to MMA. And for Combate Americas, what it means for us is there's a whole group of folks that have maybe heard of the UFC, maybe heard of MMA, but haven't yet come to it. And I think the sale just points out that this is cool stuff. Nobody pays $4.2 billion for something that's dorky, right? This is cool stuff. Um, I don't know if that not Bellator, I don't know, with that other group that Viacom has, I don't know if they're worth $4 billion. But I know the UFC was. And and that certainly put a spotlight on, on Kobate. So my personal feeling, my business feeling, my sports feeling, is it's just awesome. Awesome for the entire industry. Okay, now do you still have a relationship with Art Davey or any of the Gracies? I talk to Horion a lot. You know, I've always respected, admired, you know, it, it, Horion was great, you know. And way back in the day, Horion told me that one of the Gracies would fight any one of my choosing. No limitation. And I, I was always impressed by that. And I think Horion's a real gentleman. And I think, obviously, that, you know, the Gracies are the first family of fighting. Okay. Now, as far as your roster goes... What's the criteria to be able to compete in your league? Uh, you have to be Chingon, which means you got to be badass. Okay. You have to be badass. That's just, that's the only criteria. Uh, do we prefer fighters that are bilingual? Absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, I think what we are offering the, the, the fans is we are out looking for new talent the most exciting new talent. And I would, you know, it's obvious. The UFC has the most established talent. World-class fighters, top of their game. 
What we're looking for is that next generation. And I think guys like John Castaneda. <laughs> so, John? You know, what we're looking at is we're looking in places where the UFC isn't. We're looking at an age group, you know, 20, 21, 22 years old that the UFC isn't. So I think what we're presenting is the next generation of great MMA talent. So what do you have to do to, to fight for Combate? You've got to be, you know, badass. If you're badass, we're interested. Okay, now what sort of gyms are you scouting out as of right now? Where are you drawing your talent from exactly? You know, when a, a year ago, we had to pound the pavement. Now, literally, the tables have turned. And, you know, people like Uriah Faber calling us up and saying, I got a couple guys up here in Sacramento that you should take, you know, pay attention to. Misha Tate checking in with us and saying, look, I've got a couple people you should really, Nick Dilly Rivera, you should really look at her. So it's, it's really changed. You know, we did four shows in May and in June. TV ratings were great. The social media buzz was just huge. And it went from being a position where Micah Framowitz and Mel Valenzuela had to go looking. Now it's kind of the other way around. You know, people really are coming to us. We don't necessarily think about training camps. We tend to think about areas like McAllen, Texas, where Ricky Palacio was from. You know, honestly, the UFC, Joe Silva is not going to McAllen, Texas. I guarantee you, Joe is not. Sean, they're not walking around in McAllen. But for us, that's a perfect place for us to look. Okay. Yeah, awesome. Now, do you ever have any plans of maybe traveling outside of the United States? Maybe to Mexico or something like that? Mike, should we tell him about? No, Mike says I can't tell you that. <laughs> Not yet. I have no idea what you're talking about. Why would we go anywhere but California? <laughs> we love it here. I hear Los Angeles is beautiful. <laughs> Okay, now, who exactly does the matchmaking at uh, Combate Americas? Well, uh, it's sort of a, 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 you know, a group exercise in creativity. Uh, Greg Bloom is our official matchmaker. Uh, Mel Valenzuela, our official matchmaker. And, you know, Afro Mike, you know, he's got a background in fighting that, you know, rivals mine. He worked with Scott Coker. He helped Shannon launch Invicta. He's been with Combate since the since Combate before Combate had a name and before I went to see those Octagon girls, you know. So Mike really knows the business, and I think he's got a great eye for talent. And I think he proved that at Strike Force. He, you know, he's proved it uh, in helping Shannon with Invicta, and you know, daily, daily puts his fingerprints on uh, Combate Americas. Okay, I dig it. Now, can you kind of uh, speak a little bit on the deal with UFC Fight Pass? Of course, it will be airing on UFC Fight Pass this Thursday. Yeah, uh, we're delighted to be part of Fight Pass. You know, the reason it was particularly good for us is, number one, I do think of the UFC as, you know, it's too much to say mine because of that $4.2 billion, I'm getting zero. So it's not right to say it's mine. But I do really feel connected to the UFC, right? Going back to the, the you know, to, to, to the earliest days. You know, it's 23 years ago in November, uh, but a lot of work went into it before we got on the air in November. So I feel a real connection, a close personal and professional connection to the UFC. So I'm delighted to be part of Fight Pass. What it does for us is we've always focused on the Hispanic audience and the Spanish-speaking audience in the U.S., Fight Pass is a great place for very serious uh, uh, aficionados of the sport to see us. And, you know, we want to attract a new audience. We do think we have exciting new fighters. But I tell you, the fights are exciting for people that really know the sport, too. So it's not that you have to know nothing to enjoy Kobate. Uh, I think it actually works the other way. The more you know, the more you'll like it. And the UFC Fight Pass audience is, is, is the most sophisticated MMA audience in the world. Okay, now, does that kind of set up Combate Americas to be somewhat of a feeder league to the UFC? Hell no! Hell. <laughs> the feeder league! Okay, okay. Okay, just asking. Well, we've seen Mike, other... Mike, can I swear on this? Absolutely. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay. We have seen other uh, organizations come on to Fight Pass 
and uh, they end up having a lot of their guys go off to the UFC? Yeah, you know, look, we are not spending all this time, energy, and money to uh, serve up, you know, fighters for the UFC. We think we're presenting a very different style of fighter. Who knows? Our fighters might not even, you know, do well in the UFC. You know, if you want to see grappling-based fights, the UFC is great for that. What we're presenting is a much more exciting, much more stand-up version of MMA. So, you know, who knows? You know, again, I, I repeat, the UFC is the best class athletes, established athletes, but it is a style of MMA. It is not the only style of MMA. And I think what you see in our events is you know, a faster-paced fight. No one's riding out the clock. No one's letting it go to the judges. It's all about finishing your fight and finishing it quickly. Okay, now, Combate Ocho, this Thursday, August 11th. What can we expect? Uh, you know, more what uh, has gotten us to this point, which is exciting fights. Uh, you know, John's sitting next to me, but I would say this even if he wasn't. I expect Sexy Maxi to win. That's what I expect. But I know that, you know... Uh, uh, our fighters, every show, want to prove themselves. Every show. This is a great opportunity for a new fighter, for a young fighter. And a lot of people are bringing a lot of uh, uh, pride in being Hispanic, pride in how they represent the Hispanic community, pride in the type of style of fighting that's come to be connected to Hispanic fighters. So everyone comes to the Combate Americas events ready to fight and ready to really put on a show. Um, I know that sounds like a promoter talking, but I think you've seen the buzz online. You've seen the social media chat. You hear the numbers, 81% of the fights are ending in finishes. We really can back that up. Uh, you know, you're going to like Eddie, you're going to like it on Thursday, Eddie. You really are. You're going to watch and go, hey, he wasn't just yelling at me about, you know, not feeding the UFC machine. He actually has something. I think everybody who watches is going to be very happy with, uh, with what the show we put on. Okay, now, after the event is over, is it still going to be up on UFC Fight Pass so people can go back and watch it, or if they missed it, they can... And, and absolutely, all our shows are archived on UFC Fight Pass. Okay, even the uh, all the past ones as well? They're all there. Awesome. Okay, sweet. Now, um, after Combate Ocho, what's in store? Nine. <laughs> Nueve? <laughs> Nueve. <laughs> yeah, uh, and we are going to be in Denver in October, and we're going to be in some place I can't tell you about in November. <laughs> might, be out, might be outside of California. Might be a little south of California. A little south of the border, maybe? Perhaps? Hey, I didn't say that. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, do you have any uh, final thoughts for the audience? Uh, you know, I love MMA, and I take a great deal of pride in saying I, I really am one of the people that helped create this sport. But the sport is still evolving. It's a baby sport. It's not even 23 years old compared to baseball. Compared to the NFL, compared to the NBA, compared to soccer, the sport is still evolving. There's a lot of exciting things that are going to happen. I think it's kind of interesting to see what happens to the UFC next. You know, uh, uh, I, I, I think it's going to be a transition period where it's still going to look a lot like the UFC we know. But what's it going to be like down the line? That's interesting. As a fan, I want to see what happens there. In the meantime, Combate Americas is finding the best new fighters you can imagine, and they all come out swinging, and they go down swinging, too. Uh, uh, we like to put on, we like to think we're putting on the most exciting show in MMA. There's bigger names. Honest to God, there are bigger names. But as we all know, Floyd Mayweather, the big names don't always deliver the most exciting fights. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Combate Ocho... August 11th, UFC Fight Pass at 9 p.m. Eastern? In L.A., L.A., I'm sorry. It's sold out. <laughs> yeah, like those two words. You have it's to catch it on Fight Pass. Out. You missed it, you're going to have to watch on TV. You can't get there live anymore. Did I mention it's sold out? We don't have any tickets. Sold out. Completely done. You have to watch on Fight Pass. That's the only way. you got to come to Denver, though. Come out and see us in Denver in October. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
All right, well, Campbell McLaren, thank you so much for uh, taking out the time. You are a true pioneer, true yeah. legend. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, Thursday, look for a finish, first round. Look for a finish, yes. first round, sexy maxi. <laughs> Absolutely. Y'all take care. Thank you so much. Thanks, Eddie. So there you have it. CEO of Combate Americas, Campbell McLaren. You got Combate Ocho this Thursday, August 11th. Check it out on UFC Fight Pass at 9 o'clock. Eastern Time, 6 Pacific. You can read me on bloodyelbow.com. Follow me on Twitter at the Eddie Mercado, And be a good person.